Hello, it's Ben here, and welcome back to Beretta Killen's Pro Gaming and Reviews. Today, we have a title I've been excited for since it was announced, called Animal Crossing New Horizons. Now that it's here, there's barely been a second I haven't been consumed by this completely addicting title. I'm sure some of you aren't familiar with Animal Crossing, or even what it's about. Don't worry, we'll get you up to speed in no time, but with that, let's get into it. This is the fifth main release in the series. Besides a couple of spin-offs barely worth a mention, I'd honestly have to say this is one of the best so far. Starring a bunch of animals that stand upright, you'll have to make friends with anyone you meet and try to entice them to live in your town. Doesn't sound that exciting, right? Well, that's where you'd be wrong. In a way, Animal Crossing at Heart is a simulation game where you slowly build up a town and relationship with your townsfolk in a never-ending state, say, like The Sims. Though there is more character and charm here that Maxis could never pull off. We're talking about Nintendo here after all. Unlike simulation games you might have played in the past, you'll be collecting everything you need to build, say, your houses, bridges, outfits, sometimes medicine, almost everything. Most things can be crafted, or at least obtained with bells at the store. Bells are your form of currency, by the way, but we'll get into that later on. At the start of New Horizons, you'll find yourself travelling to a deserted island after purchasing a package to come to the island. Once you pitch your tent and clean up the island a little bit, Tom Nook will start giving you jobs or info on what you need to be doing. This is where you start to learn that every day you'll need to gather resources scattered around the island for crafting, building or selling to obtain bells, so you can pay off your tent loan. Yes, Tom is quite greedy and he'll even charge you for your tent. You'll also find creatures to catch like bugs, fish or even fossils you can get evaluated. Catching more creatures will attract the attention of your museum curator, who is now called Blathers. If you build the museum, he'll be the curator for your island's collection. Shaking or smacking trees will drop wooden fruit, sometimes pine cones or a beehive that you can sell, though you'll be stung to high hell so have some medicine handy to fix your face. Hitting stones can give you valuable resources like rocks, clay and minerals. All these materials are usually needed for crafting items, such as your fishing rod, axe, ladder and so on, once you've learned recipes to make them of course. It's quite a clever system that isn't really confusing as the items needed are usually something that makes sense like a stone for a stone bridge, or wood for a wooden table, so on and so forth. After a while you'll receive a Nook phone, which is pretty much a non-copyright version of a smartphone, but cute. The Nook phone starts off with a few apps, and as you progress through the game, apps are added for more functionality, meaning you can keep track of everything. It includes a camera where you can take really bland photos around the island, Nook Miles, which I'll explain a little bit later on, a Critopedia which collects the data of the critters that you find, your DIY recipes, custom menu design, maps, passport, best friends list, and rescue services. Admittingly, I've never used the rescue services app as it feels like calling the police and I ain't really snitching on my island. Now let's talk about the Nook Miles. You'll have a list of goals to complete and once these are done, you'll receive Nook Miles. It can vary in the amount from the easier tasks to the more complex ones down the track. Even doing simple things like gathering wood or catching a butterfly can net you 200 points. Then you can use these points to purchase specialty items or recipes. This can range from expanding your bag capacity to learning how to build fountains, whatever's available. The main hub of the island is the town hall where Tom Nook and eventually Isabel are located. You'll be able to talk to them about what jobs are available and have access to an ATM-like machine called the Nook Shop. This is where you can redeem your Nook Miles for items, use bells for others, pay off your loans or use your amiibos. Go dust them suckers off if you can because you can invite them to your island. You can also put posts on your bulletin board outside the town hall for everyone to see. I tend to post things I cannot mention here so leave it to your imagination. You can also edit your flag if you want. As you progress, you find yourself with heaps of items, and where better place to put them than in your house? You have storage space in your house to keep any excess materials or furniture that you have. Use anything as your home gets evaluated on how it looks by the Happy Home Academy. You even receive points and a rank, even a note on what you might need to do to make the house look a little bit better. Be sure to check the mailbox as there could be a present attached to the letter, and who doesn't want free stuff, right? One welcome addition in this game is the house editor. In previous titles you had to place your items where you wanted and then drag them around and in this one it's more of like a sims type editor which is much appreciated. 
When you aren't building something for the town or paying off your loan from house expansions, this is pretty much the game, nothing more, nothing less, yet it's all extremely addictive. Although there's only a few hours of gameplay a day, once you have found all your items including fruit, shells and anything you come across, you might come back the next day and there could be a fishing tournament where you need to catch five fish. Easter has a character named Zipper hiding Easter eggs around the place, so the game reacts to the calendar and the season in real time, which is a lovely touch which you don't see that often. Of course you can connect to the internet and invite your friends, although I found the process to be a little bit tedious. You can travel to islands or invite people to yours and leave the gate open so they have access to your island. This means you can trade and generally stuff around with friends, leading to some interesting interactions. To do this, you travel to the airport and follow the prompts by talking to a dodo named Orville, which is quite ironic a dodo running an airport. There are so many more aspects to cover that it's hard to mention everything without it becoming an instruction tutorial. Animal Crossing is the type of game that if you put in enough time and effort, you can get quite creative. Getting inspired by other people or designs you might see on the interwebs means that the possibilities are almost endless on top of the game that doesn't really end. Add that to the daily replay value of not knowing what sort of event you might find, you might even start looking forward to seasons like Easter or Christmas. It's crazy the amount of time that you can pour into a relatively small island made up of weirdo standing upright animals, but it works. The charm of the series is what's always made it stand out. All I can say is that I've loved this game and I'll be pouring many more hours into this island over the coming years. And for these reasons, I'll be given an 8.5 out of 10. This has been Ben from Beretta Kilns Pro Gaming and Reviews. I'm out.